This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So this is my crash damaged Toyota GT86. something about this car that I really like. It's got so much potential and there's so many aftermarket parts and upgrades you can do to this car. But first things first, it's got to be repaired. If you watched the previous video, then you would know that I picked this car up for four and a half thousand pounds, which I think is an absolute bargain, providing we can repair this thing. Now, when it got delivered, I didn't think the damage was that bad, and I thought we'd be onto a winner, but it turns out the parts were pretty hard to find, and they're pretty expensive as well. Example, this front wishbone on here is bent. The only place I could get a front wishbone from was Toyota, and it's 500 pounds. I'm not spending 500 pounds on a wishbone for a car that cost me four and a half thousand pounds. But we found a solution to that, and I'll tell you later on in the video. Look at this. I can only apologize to Kevin for making you sit in this. Sorry, mate. Anyway, let's get this thing into a unit and repaired. Now the good news with the Toyota, it runs, but it's a little bit lumpy. So in typical Matt Armstrong fashion, on the dash we have an engine light on and an ABS light on. And it almost feels as if it's struggling to idle sometimes. But I'm not going to worry about that too much yet because there may be an obvious reason to why the engine light's on and the ABS light's on when we come to stripping off the front end to do the radiator pack and the crash bar. But for now, before I crack on with the mechanical side of things, I want to get this interior nice and clean because it, well, it's pretty bad. Let's do it. So as I bought the Toyota from auction, I have no real history on the car at all. But thanks to you guys and the power of social media, we seem to have found the previous owner. And apparently the car was used as delivery driving for an Indian takeaway, which was one of my previous jobs. But still, there's no excuse for a car this dirty. Now first thing I did was remove the seats and the Hoover seems to be doing pretty well at getting all the dirt and rubbish off the carpet. Then it was just a time consuming act of rubbing down all the plastic and trim on the dashboard. Now I tried my best with the seats with what I had, but they did have a few stains on them. But I think we're gonna be replacing these at a future stage. Now I'm new to Japanese cars, but is this thing normal? Being able to pretty much pull up the whole carpet? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, after about an hour and a half, the car turned out pretty well after a clean. So all the dash and the trims turned out pretty good. It's just the seats. I think the Indian takeaways have taken a toll on this car. Fabric seats, they need shampooing and everything, but I'm not gonna waste a load of time on them because again, I think we will be replacing these at some point. But the interior is the least of our worries today. The main thing I wanna crack on with is the exterior, the damage on the outside. So we can get this thing drivable before we start the major modifications to this thing. First thing I wanna crack on with is this front wheel. I think it's just the wishbone that's pushed it forward or fingers crossed it is. I've managed to pick up a wishbone here. It was only a couple hundred quid. It is second hand because a brand new one was from Toyota only for about 500 quid, but that should do the job. Let's get this in the air and start cracking on with it. There it is. There's the bent wishbone. It looks like it's been hit or something and that's been bent there, which I think is pushing the wheel forward. Now looking at all the suspension under here, doesn't look like there's anything else which has been damaged, but well, we never know. So the wishbone is held on with three points. This is the first point here, which is a ball joint. Just have to remove a split pin off the top, and then there's a 70 mil nut which I need to unscrew. But unfortunately, the whole ball joint was spinning with that nut. So I moved on to the other two points, which came off pretty easily. I then could lower down the wishbone which gave me better access to the ball joint but no amount of mole grips or any grips in fact could stop that ball joint from spinning so out came the angle grinder i grinded off the bottom of the ball joint and then knocked the remaining stud into the hub which gave it enough grip for me to be able to turn the 17 mil bolt out then knock it back from the top yes finally got the bent wishbone off 
That is one of those jobs that you think is going to take five minutes and ends up taking a lot longer than expected. And another job people seem to think is going to be very time consuming and really difficult to do is building a website for the business. But not when using Squarespace who have sponsored today's video. From websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. Okay, check out this. This is my BMW M4 which I wrapped myself in the last video. I'm going to show you how easy it is just to create a website from Squarespace just purely advertising my last video. So when you head to squarespace.com, the first thing you choose is a template. There's loads to choose from. Then we can go in there and edit any text or buttons on the screen, add our logos, add our own photos in there. Here's a photo I took on my phone of the M4. Then before you know it, the website begins to look like your own and professional as well. I can also see what it looked like on a mobile view as well, which is really important nowadays. And there's also a bunch more tools on the left hand side. So when you need a website, go to squarespace.com or click the link in the description box below and when you're ready to launch, use code Matt Armstrong and you're going to get yourself 10% off your first website or domain name. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's crack on with fitting that wishbone. Oh my days, this stuff literally only happens to me. I, I swear it just only happens to me. So obviously I've just got off the driver's side wishbone here. I don't know how I didn't notice this beforehand. And this is the wishbone that I've got. Well, turns out this is a passenger side wishbone. Even though I ordered a driver's side wishbone, I even went to collect it, but I wouldn't have known the difference between the two because I never had that one off well, and now it's completely different. So, well, looks like the wishbone isn't being done at the minute, fantastic. Literally, this stuff is enough to make you lose your mind sometimes. Spent all that time getting it off, I can't even put another one on. Anyway, we might as well crack on with this bent front crash bar and the broken radiator whilst we're here, so let's get this off. If you keep this up, then I'll let you in, cause you so it seems like the crash bar took most of the impact in the crash, which is exactly its purpose. It seems to have protected most of the car, apart from being pushed into the aircon condenser and the radiator. There's a few things I had to move out of the way, like this washer bottle, before I could get to the four bolts each side of the crash bar to remove it. But all in all, it was pretty easy to remove. Okay, so I may have taken a bit of a loss with the wishbone, but we may be able to swap it, but we could be on to a winner here. So after taking the crash bar off, I can see now, this is the aircon condenser and then the radiator is here. What I did the night before, I actually filled this up with coolant and ran it, and there's still coolant in it, and it actually hasn't leaked out anywhere. Um, there was still a fair bit of coolant that was in there at the minute. So it seems like the radiator is actually okay, and yes, there is a little bit of damage here to the aircon condenser, but the aircon still works in the car. Now, I did actually buy a radiator pack here for a couple of hundred quid, which is in pretty good condition, but we may get away with just selling that now because that looks like it still works. Yes, the crash bar is completely gone, but we've got another crash bar as well. So a bit of a winner there if we can get away with using this one here. And here is the crash bar. I couldn't find it anywhere else apart from Toyota directly. It wasn't actually too badly priced at 220 quid and the guys at Toyota were really helpful. They watched the channel. Shout out to you guys. So, well, let's get it on. So refitting the crash bar again, pretty simple job. Four bolts each side. We're doing the whole thing in reverse. Now the old horn was on the old crash bar, so I need to remove that and put it on the new one. But again, another easy job. Okay, so these are the stock headlights, and although there's not really any damage to them at all, we're gonna upgrade them. So I've got these new LED uprated headlights from eBay for only £400. Now I'm hoping, unlike the German cars, these are just plug and play, and I won't need any coding. Now they didn't come with any headlight bulbs, so I need to go and get them, but let's just see if the LED works and the indicators. Yeah, they look sick. And the indicators work, both sides, come on. Yes, I am more than happy with them. That completely transforms the front of the car. Now, I managed to pick up a driver's side wishbone, bit of copper grease on the ball joint, then it's ready to be fitted to the car. Again, same thing, but in reverse, without the angle grinding this time. Then in with the arch lining that I found in the boot. And back on with the front wheel, which turned out to be pretty buckled. Then onto the moment of truth. Is the wheel sitting in the right position now? 
Okay, so that seems to have done the job. I think with the trusty fist measurement, can't really get a fist in there. Then on this side, yeah, we're absolutely bang on there. Well, I think we'll find out when we get it on a tracking thing, but so far, so good. Next step is this bonnet. Um, yeah, this bonnet is taking a bit of damage. We need to get this off and then Hannah is gonna go and collect the new bonnet for it. We're not gonna go standard, oh no. Now after removing the old bonnet, I can see that the engine bay was really dusty and dirty. So give it a quick spray down with the silly shine. Obviously the link is in the description. And it turned out pretty good. Okay, so Hannah's off to go get the bonnet. Go on, Hannah. And whilst Hannah goes to get the bonnet, we need to check while the engine light and the ABS lights on on the GT86. So I plugged my tool into the OBD port and scanned for the trouble codes. Now the first code that came up was the MAF sensor, which is a mass airflow sensor, which is located right next to the air filter. Now these could become faulted because they get dirt on, so I took it out, gave it a clean, and then cleared the code. The next fault code which came up was something to do with the ABS, but I wasn't really familiar with that, so I just cleared it off and then hoped for the best. Okay, so I've erased the fault with the mass airflow sensor and I've erased the fault with the ABS sensor as well. Let's start it up and see if any of them come back. Oh, and yeah, we're still there. Okay, so it looks like we need a new MAF sensor, which is here. Uh, a good way to show that it's not even working is that the car's running now, I unplug it, and literally nothing has changed. It's not even bogged down at all, so yeah, that definitely needs changing. Now, it is a common problem for the ABS pumps to go on this, so potentially that could be the problem with the ABS. They can be reconditioned, though, and fixed. But at least we know now, at least we know now. But some of that may be changing because, well, potentially, turbos. And Hannah is back with the bonnet. Yes, we've not replaced it with the standard bonnet, of course. We've gone full carbon. Yeah, this is going to be pure race slash track slash show car sort of thing. So it was quite difficult to find a standard bonnet. Um, but well, in the end, we end up getting a full carbon one, which I think is going to look sick. I know some people are 50-50 about carbon bonnets, but let's just get it fitted. Okay, I love the bonnet, but I think we have an issue. The hinges, which is normally does happen when obviously you have damage to a bonnet and it's in a crash, the hinges are definitely bent. I put this in loose, but like, as you can see, that is literally touching. You come down here and there is a gigantic gap. So I think the bonnet hinges are gonna to need to be replaced. I'm gonna try and bend them a bit and see if I can sort of work it out, but definitely I think the bonnet hinges have absolutely had it, but the carbon looks actually sick. How shiny is that? I know some of you are gonna hate it, some of you are gonna love it, but that's made it look so more aggressive. Love it. Okay, we are onto a winner. Bit of jigging, bit of moving, and I've managed to sort of sort out the panel lines out on each side. I think maybe it still needs to go over to the left-hand side, but that is looking a lot better than it is. Everything is like aluminium underneath, so it's pretty easy to sort of pull, move, and twist. Yes, sick. Okay, so the little Toyota may not look like anything yet. It's definitely improved since we first started. Now this front bumper, <laughs> this is the start of it. Let me show you. Okay, I'm about to get absolutely killed in the comment section, I know. <laughs> what this is, is a Rocket Bunny replica front bumper and yes i have the full kit it is obviously a wide arch kit or a wide body kit for the full car and it only cost 1200 pounds like a front bumper alone was around 400 pounds for this car so i thought why not let's just send it and transform the whole car into a rocket bunny car. Now, I already know a lot of you are skeptical and probably wincing at your screens right now, but believe me, this is gonna look so good. Just Google Rocket Bunny GT86. It looks sick. And that's all I'm gonna leave you with today, but trust me, the build is starting very soon. Again, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Make sure you subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.